Installing software on Linux is, for better or worse, one of its defining features or flaws. App images, flat packs, and snap packages are three competing universal packaging and distribution solutions intended to make installing, publishing, and updating software easier for users and developers. But do they really? We're going to look at how they work, all the unique features of each one, and just about everything else that's coming up right now. So stick around. Howdy folks, I'm Jay and this is DS Tech Media. It's content about hardware, software, and everything in between, especially Linux and open source. Linux distros are centered around package managers. Uh, Ubuntu and Debian use Deb packages. Red Hat, Fedora, and OpenSUSE use RPMs. Applications often share uh, packages they rely on called dependencies, and the numerous distros, formats, and versions create fragmentation that makes it hard for developers to support each version of every distribution. App images, flat packs, and snap packages are all about solving that problem and making it easier for the developers to publish once to all the distros and thereby making it somewhat easier for users to get the software installed. This can be uh, particularly useful if the version or an application that you need isn't in your distros mainline repositories. Most of the software that your distro uses is going to come uh, straight from the repository. There's other things like uh, Ubuntu's PPAs, which stands for Personal Package Archives, third-party software that's released to GitHub, and of course installing directly from source. But obviously that can be a bit confusing for new users so having a standardized way of doing things is a goal especially for desktop Linux. So over here I have a comparison that is directly from AppImage's GitHub wiki and it compares AppImage to Snaps and Flatpaks. AppImage and Snaps are suited for server processes and flat pack it's possible but it is not the main goal when it comes to uh, correct application theming app image yes if done correctly snap packages it says no snapd doesn't have full theming integration but i think this has changed since this was written i've mostly had working themes with snaps and flat pack yes if the current system theme has been flat pack libraries and dependencies base system or bundled with app image snap packages base distro snap or with parts and plugins and flat packs free desktop gnome kde main run times or bundled with the flat pack app image is a community project not driven by a single company app images are produced by many large and small companies including ibm kdab microsoft bruce research snap packages are created by canonical the company behind ubuntu flat packs uh, began at red hat but it's a steering committee of multiple companies including endless red hat code think and egalia when it comes to sandboxing and confinement, snap packages and flat packs are built with a sandbox environment and runtime in mind. App image doesn't include sandboxing, but can be used with Fire Jail, App Armor, or Bubble Wrap. Snap packages are tied to Ubuntu's App Armor 
and flat packs are tightly coupled to bubble wrap. App images can run without installation entirely. Snaps require you to first have SnapD installed and flat packs need to be installed by Flatpak client side tools. App images can run entirely without root access. Snaps and Flatpaks can only run without root access after installation of their frameworks. When it comes to size, app image and Flatpaks run from compressed source before it's unpacked. App images and Flatpaks run from unpacked compressed sources. Flatpak does not. And app image is the only one where the downloadable file can be placed right on their website next to their Windows EXEs or Mac OS DMGs. When it comes to the application's authors self-hosting the application with no features lost, the only one that cannot do that is Snap Packages. All three of them have uh, central repositories, uh, App Image Hub for App Images, the Snap Store for snaps and flat hub for flat packs snap packages require the snap store which is run by canonical whereas app images and flat packs are pretty versatile and can be done however the user prefers when it comes to the update process snaps and flat packs have updates built in whereas app images have to have app image update they can however be self updating with the proper embedded information. Objectives and governance. Only app image is a community project independent from any distro maker. Snap is tied to Canonical and Ubuntu. Flatpak, it claims here, is tied to Red Hat, but I think it's more of a genome project at this point. I wouldn't consider Flatpak linked to any company's dominant business case. Snap definitely is. Uh, when it comes to adoption, as of 10.05.2019, there were 862 app images, uh, 2,437 snaps as of 10.06.2018, and 697 apps on Flathub as of December 9th, 2019. There's a lot of adoption for app images and snaps. Microsoft's in both of them. And apparently Electron Builder has app image and snap support built in for development. Whereas Flatpak only is supported by Gnome Builder. So when it comes to the design of each one of these solutions, Flatpaks and snap packages share the most in common. There is a lot of parallels with containers and even packaging formats like the ones used on Android or Chrome OS. And especially with snap packages because Canonical developed snap packages originally for Ubuntu Touch. So they wanted a way to push updates that were basically a read-only application where you were getting a complete new copy of the app each time it was updated. It would run in a sandbox environment where permissions could be managed for each app on a per app basis. And this was originally called Snappy. Snap packaging is a core part of Canonical's enterprise strategy because it has a lot of uses there as well. And here we have traditional Deb and RPM applications versus the Flatpak runtime. In the top, the three apps have access to all of the dependency libraries of the operating system and all of those blue library blocks can be shared between the three apps or some of them may be unique to the particular application. With the flat packs, the apps run in a container and they're packaged with their unique dependencies and the flat pack runtime is called by the flat packs for dependencies that might be shared across different apps. Here we have 
a diagram of uh, classic Ubuntu where you have the kernel and all of the application dependencies are shared. Ubuntu Core is actually a specialized snappified version of Ubuntu that runs the entire OS the same way a snap package operates and only installs snap applications on top of it. I actually did a tutorial a while back of installing Ubuntu Core on a Raspberry Pi and then it quickly installing uh, Nextcloud server and this was literally a few terminal commands versus a traditional Nextcloud install would require installing an entire LAMP server with Apache and MySQL or MariaDB and PHP but snaps make that very quick and easy when it comes to app images there is no framework that needs to be installed each app image is just an individual file that you download from GitHub, App Image Hub, or even the developer's website. That package gets mounted to your temporary file system directory. All of its dependencies are packaged within. There's no runtimes or anything like that. It also doesn't include sandboxing or permissions. So when it comes to getting started, AppImage is absolutely the simplest. You simply go to AppImage Hub or some of them are provided on the developer's GitHubs or even the website for the app. To run it, you simply download the AppImage file and chmod a plus x and then the name of the AppImage and then run it. Additionally, if you want to do it in your file manager, you can just right click it, go to permissions, and add the execute permissions. Uh, for flat packs, you can go to their website and simply pick your distribution, of which they have a lot. And on some of these, flat packs are already supported out of the box, like with elementary. For Ubuntu, it's just a sudo apt install flat pack. For older versions, you might have to add a PPA. And for the Ubuntu Software Center, we can do sudo apt install GNOME software plugin flat pack. And that'll literally allow you to install flat packs from the Ubuntu Software Center. But since Ubuntu 2004, the Ubuntu Software Center is now distributed as a snap package and does not support graphical installation of Flatpak apps. So they're literally using their packages to combat other packages. It's kind of a very Ubuntu thing to do. And once you have Flatpak installed, if you're not going to be doing it through the Software Center, can use this command flat pack remote at if not exists flat hub and then the address for flat hub here and then it restarts your system and install some apps to get started with uh, snap packages you would simply have to do a sudo apt install snapd so to get started installing snaps you simply go to their website and pick your distribution on elementary it would simply be a sudo apt install snapd so an example of when you might need to use an app image a flat pack or a snap package the latest version of Caden Live is version 2004 and let's say I want to go ahead and install that I'm on Ubuntu 18.04 and let's check Caden Live, see what the latest version available is. Version 4.18, well that's not the latest version. If I want the latest version, I'm going to have to get it from somewhere besides Ubuntu's official repositories. Could add a PPA and install it that way or I could simply find it as one of the three universal packages. 
Let's open up the Ubuntu Software Center. And if we do the search, we get four versions of Caden Live. And you'll notice here, this one says source dl.flathub.org. So since Snap packages are a canonical product, Ubuntu comes with Snap packages integrated into the software center. So if we click this, we can see that this is from the Snap store. However, if you want to add Flatpak integration to the Ubuntu software center, you have to do that manually. And we can do that by genome software plugin as you can see there's the flat pack and there is the snap and then there's also limbo which this video is not about so starting with version 2004 of ubuntu you cannot add the flat pack integration to the ubuntu software center which is actually the gnome software center and the reason for this is because the software center itself on 2004 is now a snap package. Elementary OS, I believe, comes with a flat pack support built in to Elementary's App Center, but it is very convenient to have them all available in one place. Another uh, added benefit of the snap integration to the Ubuntu Software Center, it allows you to manage Snap Package permissions. So I have GIMP installed via Snap, and I can go here to Permissions, and here are the permissions that it requires, and you get a nice little toggle for that. I'm not sure about Fedora or Elementary OS with flat packs. Uh, the alternative to managing permissions in the App Center in the Software Center is via. So if we do snap hyphen H, we get help and we can see all of the command line options for snaps, permissions, we've got connections, interfaces, connect and disconnect. Let's do connections, and these are all the different interfaces for GIMP. This is the plug, and these are the slots. Let's try snap connections. And that lists all the connections. OpenGL, network manager, network bind, network. So these are all of the various connections. If we just wanted to list installed snap packages, we can go to snap list. And here are all the snaps I have installed. So additionally, snaps also feature a snapshot function that allows you to back up all of your snaps and configuration and even export and import those to other computers. And the revert option allows you to roll back a snap package to a previous version. You can also have various versions of snaps installed concurrently. Flatpak also has its own full featured command line interface. So if we do flatpak remote list we get an entire list of everything available in the remote. If we do Flatpak remotes, there is the Flathub, and there are other remotes available, but Flathub is basically the official source. Whereas with Snap packages, the Snap store is the only source of Snap packages and it is controlled by Canonical. And the other issue with the Snap Store is that that backend is not only just operated by Canonical, but it's proprietary and not open source. So some people may take issue with that. Canonical also makes money by granting extra feature support 
to developers who are paying them for special privileges when it comes to developing snap packages. Snap packages almost never really need to be updated. They pretty much update on their own. Whereas with flat packs, you usually need to do a sort of manual update and on Ubuntu that is handled once again through the Ubuntu software center. So if we run a flat pack list, we will get a list returned of all of the installed flat packs on this system. And just like with snap packages we have basically runtime items so here we have gnome applications platform and various different versions for different theme supports you have to install themes so i have um the ambience arc darker community theme pop coger themes all installed and here we have the kde application platforms the gnome theme platforming and that allows you to have better theme integration with flat packs and also you have things like ffmpeg extensions uh, nvidia drivers and these are all things that your applications will call on most of these will be installed alongside the uh, flat packs that require them and we can check permissions flat pack permission show and then we have Blade. As I mentioned before, flat packs use bubble wrap as their sandbox, and snap packages use app armor, which is native to Ubuntu. Rap. Typically, you won't even need to interact with flat packs or snap packages from the terminal because you have the software centers or Snapcraft. The snap store and one thing you'll notice about the snap store is you'll see a lot more proprietary software like skype available and if we just click install we can either copy the command line or if we're on ubuntu 1604 or later we can view in desktop store on flathub we have the install button and opening that will get us a flat pack ref and we can just right click that and open with Ubuntu software. Another cool way of managing flat pack permissions, a graphical way of managing them, and it is available as a flat pack itself called Flat Seal. It displays all of your installed flat packs and shows you every possible permission and interface available so you simply uh, click the app so flowblade and you can allow it to access the shared networking shared interprocess communications sockets for the sandbox x11 wayland pulse audio sound server dbus so that is a pretty handy application one of the uh, main drawbacks to all three is theme support which has improved a lot since i started using them but the uh, biggest issue is with app images so here i have the latest version of inkscape 1.0 as an app image and i'm going to also run inkscape 93 that i have installed on my system through the repositories this is the native installed one and it follows my theme and my icons so i'm using a custom icon theme and they're all shown here as they should be however with the app image version it's using the bundled icons which i absolutely hate and the other issue is if i change my system theme the install the theme changes for the repository version but the app image version does not respect the theme that I set. 
So that's one little drawback with flat packs and snap packages. There's also somewhat of a longer wait when launching applications. Uh, especially with snap packages, the delay is quite noticeable, but they are working on it and it has improved. With snap packages, all of your snap applications are mounted as a SquashFS compressed file system in the root snap directory on your system and they will appear as loop devices. So all of these loop devices are various snap packages that I have installed and I'm running my Caden Live app image and it gets mounted at temporary mount Caden and the version and it's actually a hidden mount but they get mounted in the temporary directory. Another uh, feature for app images is app image D and it's an optional daemon that watches locations like bin or downloads for app images and if it detects some registers them with the system so they show up in the menu have their icons show up mime types associated etc. It also unregisters app images from the system if they're deleted. You can use it as a sandbox if you like if the fire jail sandbox is installed and you can get that via a wget command in the terminal and then all you have to do is chmod a and x or they have a releases section with a continuous build and it's available there once it's installed you run it via app image d and if you simply run it, it will automatically go through all of the default directories and install every app image it detects. A uh, bit of warning, if you're like me and you have multiple uh, app images, it will integrate every one of them. So all four of my Kaden Live versions now have icons, but you can also use it to uninstall any of your app images to undo that. Another cool add-on for app images is the app image launcher and it does a lot of the same functions as app image D but gives you a easier way of managing everything so it has app image desktop integration, update management, removal, and it also has a command line interface. And once App Image Launcher is installed, when you go to run an app image, you'll get a first run dialog and you can have it set to ask whether to move new app images to a central location and the target destination you can set on your own and it has the ability to automatically update supported app images and you can choose whether or not to auto start the auto integration daemon and you can add additional directories that it will watch and one other little tool I'd like to add is CHOB. And CHOB is a universal search for app images, flat packs, and snap packages. And all you have to do is download the file, make it executable, and then run it. I already have it installed, so I'll do CHOB Flowblade. And it found Flowblade in the Flathub. Let's try Caden Live. And it found Caden Live app images and Flathub. So that's just another way if you're a terminal based user, Chob may interest you. So that's uh, a close look at app images, flat packs, and snap packages. I wish I could say that there was a clear winner here, but obviously it's sort of a use whatever works for you. Um, app images are personally my, my favorite because it's just very simple. I really dislike the fact that 
there's no theme support for app images so you know i can have the latest inkscape but it looks absolutely terrible i personally use all three and of course you're gonna have to use whichever works for you i use the flowblade video editor as a flat pack i use kaden live as an app image i'm using the snap version of gimp uh, my geary email client is the flat pack version so you know these are apps that i use every day pretty much and they're across all three of them i of course run my next cloud server on a raspberry pi uh, via the Ubuntu core snap and that is absolutely awesome because it's pretty secure and it's always up to date and it's really just a no fuss experience. Let me know uh, what you think. Which ones do you like? What do you like about them? What don't you like about them? Leave a comment below. I'll leave links in the description to Chob, AppImageD, and App Image Launcher. If you like this video, uh, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. But let me know why you didn't like it. Leave a comment. If you want more Linux content like this, go ahead and subscribe. Uh, this is a small channel, but we are growing all the time. And I upload new content regularly for DS Tech Media. I'm Jay. Thank you for watching, and we will see you in the next one.